Welcome to episode 126 of Build Your House Yourself University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can build well designed dream homes with or without a general contractor. Most of us building custom homes are not just doing it for ourselves, but so our friends and family can enjoy the space too, even if you don't plan on being the central hub for regular cocktail parties, game nights, and potlucks, your nice new house will probably be the spot for holiday dinners and casual family barbecues at least once or twice a year. So in this week's episode, I'll give you some quick tips on how to design a home for entertaining with features that'll make your parties run more smoothly, make your guests feel comfortable, and features that'll help you enjoy more time with your friends and family during your get-togethers. Let's get right into it. Number one, include oversized sliding, French, or folding doors so you can open them up wide and essentially eliminate the wall between the interior room and the outdoors. This expands your entertaining space, increases ventilation, and gives your guests a good amount of free flow between the interior and exterior. Number two, design an open concept great room where there are sight lines between the kitchen, dining room, and living room, creating a shared experience for cooking, eating, and conversation. That way, those in the kitchen can interact with those in the living and dining rooms so no one feels isolated while preparing food or cleaning up. An open concept great room also allows your guests to spread out so everyone is together, but not on top of each other. Number three, add a sideboard or buffet to your dining area. Use its cabinets and drawers to store extra plates and silverware for your guests. And the top of the buffet can be used to display different appetizers, entrees, side dishes, and desserts, so guests can help themselves during parties. A self-serve dinner or party is a lot easier on you as host. Number four, consider glass front cabinets or open shelving for glasses, so friends and family can easily grab a glass if they want a drink. Displaying glasses is so much easier than trying to direct people to the exact right cabinet where glasses are stored and hidden from view. Have you ever had this conversation? No, the glasses are in the cabinet to the right. No, the the upper right. Not that one. Go over one. Look at the one that's two cabinets down from the fridge. Oh, goodness. And instead of going through all of that, just make it easy for guests to find the glassware. You can also put plates on display if you're so inclined, but it seems like folks go searching for glassware more often than they do plates. Number five, if you do a lot of group cooking, you'll need lots of counter space and different work zones. One work zone might be for prepping food. That's my specialty. I'm not a good cook, but I'm an awesome sous chef. There should also be a zone for cooking and for cleanup. Make sure there's enough room beside and behind each of those zones so friends and family have plenty of room to work. Number six, make kitchen aisles wide enough to allow for good flow. Aisles and walkways in the kitchen should ideally be at least 42 inches. 36 inches could work, but it'll be tight. If more than one person will be cooking or prepping in the kitchen, shoot for 48 inch aisles. Number seven, Design your house for good traffic flow. Good traffic flow means that people can move through the house without having to go through work areas or go through furniture clusters or through personal spaces like bedrooms. When people move from the front door to and through the main living space, they should be able to navigate the space easily without bumping into corners or furniture. Walkways should be at least three feet wide but preferably four to five feet wide. Two to five feet is needed between chairs and sofas in seating areas. Number eight, if you live in a chilly or cold climate, add a little extra space to your entry coat closet to accommodate your guests' coats and jackets. You can also store collapsible coat racks in your garage, basement, or attic and set them up in a bedroom, laundry room, or office 
to create a temporary coat room during parties. Number nine, incorporate extra seating into the architecture of your home, such as an oversized hearth, built-in benches, or window seats that add dimension and beauty on a day-to-day basis, but also provide extra seating when you entertain. And speaking of seating, number 10, buy furniture pieces that can be used as seating during a party, such as ottomans, which can be tucked under console tables and pulled out when you need extra seating. Or use garden stools as side tables in your living spaces and in guest bedrooms. A garden stool is typically shaped like a small barrel, and it's made of ceramic, wood, plastic, or metal, and they look great as side tables, but they're also sturdy enough for most people to sit on. Take a look at the show notes for an image of a garden stool. Benches and ottomans can also double as coffee tables and as extra seating. Okay, one more thing about seating. Number 11, if you host dinners pretty regularly, invest in comfortable dining chairs in medium to darker tones with high-performance scotch-guarded cloth fabric. Some people like to use outdoor fabric for those indoor pieces. Alternatively, you can use easy-to-wipe-down wood, leather, or pleather chairs. Just make sure those chairs are comfortable, because if your friends are like mine, they'll often linger at the dining table for lots of conversation after the meal. Number 12. Locate a powder room or guest bathroom close to, but not directly off of, the main living area. You want a bathroom for guests that's fairly easy to find, but that provides them with plenty of privacy too. We're planning on a guest bathroom directly off the entry hall that's just around the corner from our great room. Number 13, set up seating clusters for group conversations and for intimate one-on-one conversations. For example, in addition to having a large sectional or sofa next to a couple of chairs for groups to talk, Tuck an upholstered bench or two occasional chairs in a quiet corner for one-on-one conversations. A bonus here is that the bench and the occasional chairs can be added to your dining table for extra seating. Number 14, install low-maintenance flooring so spills are simple to clean up and scuffs and scratches are easy to camouflage. Instead of going with light stone floors or carpeting, which easily absorb stains and spills, opt for porcelain tiles, luxury vinyl flooring, or wood floors that will allow you to easily wipe up spills. If you decide on wood flooring, consider low gloss, distressed or scraped wood floors that will more readily hide scratches, scuffs, and dents. Number 15, invest in a quiet range hood and dishwasher so you don't have to raise your voices during cooking and clean up. Number 16, soundproof bedrooms that are around the entertaining spaces so family members who want to retire before the party has ended won't be disturbed. Take a listen to episode 72 for more information on soundproofing. Number 17, add a second living space, bonus room, or lounge for kids, preferably on another level, where they can play games, hang out, and make noise without disturbing the adults. Number 18. If you often have cocktail parties, transform an office or a bedroom in the front of the house into a bar so guests are welcomed with a cocktail soon after they arrive. Store a portable bar cart or two in a closet in that room and bring the cart out when it's time to party. Number 19. Think about guest parking when you're designing your house. Is there space for your guests to park on the street near your house? If not, is it possible to add a semicircular or circular driveway where guests can park in the front of your house? Or can you request an extra wide driveway for guest parking? You could also choose to forego lots of grass in your front or side yards and install beautiful pavers, gravel, or concrete slabs instead. That will provide extra parking spaces for your guests. Bonus here is that the parking area is low maintenance as compared to a lawn. I know it might not sound homey or attractive, but you can really do a lot of beautiful designs with hardscaping materials. 
Take a look at the show notes for some pretty but practical hardscaping ideas that will allow for extra parking. And number 20, consider a second dishwasher if you entertain regularly and if you have the budget to do it. That way, you can wash all the dishes at once instead of doing one load after another. With two dishwashers, you can also clean up in a shorter amount of time. Well, there are your 20 entertaining quick tips. I hope that helped. If you know someone who's building or remodeling, who entertains a lot, you can share this episode with them by text or email. Or if you like, you can share this on one of your social media channels. I want to remind you that you can search at the Buy High You website with the search box. The search box is at the top right of the screen if you're on your computer or a large tablet. If you're on your phone, you'll have to scroll down to the very bottom of the screen to find the search box. That's all I have for you this week. Thank you for joining me. I hope you'll join me again next week for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.